Okay, welcome to a little bit of story time. Um, these are two laptops that I'm actually getting ready to send to Best Buy for e-waste. And um, I wanted to just document these before they had to go to pasture because of how old they are. Uh, so I'm going to be comparing uh, this IBM right here and this uh, Toshiba satellite, which, um, as you know, IBM, uh, well, now Lenovo still makes the ThinkPad. But the Toshiba satellite, um, Toshiba has not made any laptops um, for at least a decade, if not more. So these are just relics of a, of a bygone era. And just for kicks, I'm going to be comparing it against my uh, MacBook, which you're going to definitely see how much uh, improvements have come around in the last uh, almost 30 years. So up first is this uh, IBM ThinkPad. This is a Model 760 XD from approximately 1997. And uh, this is the older of the two laptops. And uh, I believe this is a, it's either a 486 or a Pentium. I'm not, uh, not sure off the top of my head. Unfortunately, I can't power either one of these laptops. Um, but as you can see, even back in uh, uh, 1997, they still had the uh, infamous cat tongue. Uh, pointer there and uh, actually there's no trackpad you're gonna notice there it's just the it's just the cat tongue and the two buttons there and um, it this is approximately I'm gonna say it's about a 10 inch monitor 10 to 12 inch screen and uh, you can see that um, it uses LCD as it's um, for its indicators and I believe this was the uh, the brightness for the um, monitor here and um, your speakers were right over here and then down here is an optical drive. That was a, uh, a CD-ROM drive. It was back in 97, it was just CD-ROM drive. And uh, I'm just gonna turn this a little bit here. And on the back, you can see here the power, power switch is right there. This is where you would have put the plug and your headphones. And then right there is um, a modem. That is not an ethernet. If you wanted to do an ethernet, you would have to get an expansion card for that. Uh, so that was kind of interesting. Also, one thing I noticed too, is that when you do close this thing, it actually, um, the keyboard actually raises, which is kind of interesting. I mean, that's just more excuses for dust to get under there. But it was cool that when you uh, when you open this thing, um, the keyboard actually raises, which is pretty sweet. Um, in the back here, you can see that uh, there are there was an additional like uh, docking stations were still like brand new back in '97. So there's the there is your uh, ability to put in a docking station. Um, I actually use an IBM ThinkPad for work nowadays. It's nowhere as chunky as this thing, but it does use a um, docking, it does have a docking station. It's pretty cool. So there are certain technologies that have only gotten better. And uh, it's just really cool here. Here's the other side. This is where you would put um, expansion cards. They used to call those the PCMIA cards. And um, you would um, eject it by pushing this button over here. And actually this one still has uh, there you go. That's a compact flash adapter, which is kind of funny. I still had that in there. And then um, you could also switch it out. For example, when Ethernet cards were brand new, you could um, put that in and then this little dongle would attach to the card. It was really flimsy, so I had to be very careful. And then if you didn't want to use the cat tongue, that is a PS2 port. <laughs> um, this is the era that I grew up in. Uh, so I'm very familiar. As a kid, this is what we used to tinker with. And, uh, you know, um, a laptop like this was like $4,000 back in the day. Um, you would put a lock right there. And then um, the way that this thing would close is uh, by when you closed it. And actually, I was mistaken. This was the volume. And this is actually the brightness for the screen. So if anybody's curious, that's, that's where the brightness was. It was an actual knob, go fig, or a, a slider. And then in, when you closed it, it would give you that very satisfying click, but in order for me to open it again, there's actually two snaps on either side and you open it like a briefcase. So since I'm holding the camera, there's no way I'm gonna be able to do that. I just put this thing on the scale and uh, it is clocking in at uh, nearly seven pounds for this machine. Um, I, you know, to be honest, it would have been really fun if I could have spent some time uh, with a screwdriver and then taking this thing apart. But uh, not much time now, but at least you get to see what uh, a um, near 30-year laptop looks like. So, uh, yeah, let me go ahead and uh, switch it off to the Toshiba. And this is a Toshiba Satellite 335 uh, CDS. And uh, this is pretty cool because this one actually 
comes with the original user manual and this lovely little user's guide about Windows 98 <laughs> and your Toshiba computer. Um, so when this uh, when this laptop came out, I was uh, basically in uh, middle school and about to enter high school. And uh, man, I don't even remember how chunky these laptops were because technically my very first laptop was a Toshiba Portage. It was a Pentium 2 233 slimline. And uh, it was something that I actually bought used. And just from a personal standpoint, I didn't buy my ver like my own brand spanking new laptop like brand new to myself until almost 2019 and it was a mac uh but i'm gonna go through uh some of the uh things that uh, are involved with this one of the funny things about toshiba is is that the headquarters for the um uh for the laptop department actually used to be in irvine it overlooked the five freeway and it's not there anymore, but uh, <laughs> at least you can still see that uh, you know, Toshiba, Toshiba had a great run and then it just wasn't making any money. So they had to ax, they just decided to ax the laptop department. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this uh, guy here. This one is a little bit more decorated um, than the other one. Uh, someone decided to take all the labels from CDs, which is kind of random. And uh, you can see here that this one too has the cat tongue and no touchpad. This is, uh, like I said, 1997, 1998. And there's your left click and right click, the right click being the smaller of the two buttons. Um, I mean, there was a benefit to that, noting that it was a lot more ambidextrous friendly because you didn't have to worry about that. But then touchpads, you know, were just far more accurate. Still had the original stickers, but there you go. That is a Pentium, I believe this is a Pentium 1, 133. If I recall from 1997 and you know something like this it won't have the same kind of power as a desktop but it uh but you know for the compactness that's where it was uh it shined well I mean I don't know this is extremely compact which by the way back in 1998 there was a brand called compact um had to throw that in there so if you look at this one this one's a little bit more complete this one has a three in a half floppy drive and a comp and a cd-rom drive this one also does have the PCMIA uh, expansion slots. Uh, this one here has a really chunky Ethernet uh, Ethernet um, card, and so it takes up both slots. You can't put anything on top here. And then there's that security lock slot right there. But uh, yeah, kind of crazy here because this was a 10100 um, Ethernet uh, from uh, when uh, that became that was uh, starting to come around because you know DSL was coming around and and higher speed internet, you know, we're starting to leave the 56K modems. However, with these laptops, you could get the 56K modem card and plug that in if you felt like it. Uh, for this laptop too, is your brightness is a manual knob. So that's how you would adjust the brightness on one of these things. And uh, it didn't have the same LCD thing that the IBM ThinkPad had, but the idiot lights right there, your caps lock, scroll lock and um, number lock are up there. So that's pretty cool. Let me go ahead and turn this guy around, Hiller. And this one here um, didn't have the expansion. So it, it didn't have the uh, slot, the port for the um, uh, docking station. But you can see um, from here, you've got your PS2 port. There's your power port. Um, because it was 1998, um, USB was brand new. So it did have the one USB port so you could plug something in. This one did have infrared. That's the exhaust port for the fan. And then you've got your serial cable, your parallel cable if you had a printer, and your VGA cable for output. So if you needed to uh, plug into a projector or an external monitor, you had that option with this Toshiba. But uh, yeah, this was, uh, that was good fun. And then we're gonna just rotate this one more time. And this is where your, um, your sound, so there will be your volume control, there's your headphone, microphone jack, and looks like that's an audio in, and then your power button's right there. So there's a reset button, you'd actually have to use like a toothpick or something to, to do that. So there's your power button for that. So uh, yeah, this, uh, this is what, um, this, this is what a, a laptop looked like nearly 30 years ago. Um, still same idea, same form factor, but man, this thing was chunky. Also, one of the things about these laptops is back then, the batteries were interchangeable. You can actually replace the battery back here. Um, kind of a pain in the butt. The idiot lights for your hard drive um, power, 
uh, charging and uh, whether or not the floppy drive and CD-ROM driver being used are right here. Those are your idiot lights for that. And uh, that this was where the battery door was so that you could change the battery. So you could be um, having the laptop plugged in and then you could just change the battery out and swap it. That's what they did for longevity instead of just figuring out that, you know, uh, you could come up with a better processing power without using as much battery life. Okay, just put this one on the scale, and this one actually is a little bit heavier than the IBM ThinkPad. The IBM ThinkPad came in at 6 pounds 9 ounces, and this one is 6 pounds 12 ounces. Still, though, anything over 6 pounds, do I really want to be carrying that around? Uh, probably not. Um, you know, just to put in perspective, my work Lenovo ThinkPad is uh, weighing in at 7 pounds approximately, but it's basically a desktop queen, and it has a Xeon processor, so um, that thing doesn't really leave my desk. Okay, so in terms of thickness, this is the Toshiba Satellite compared to my 2022 MacBook Pro. <laughs> oh my goodness. That is, um, that's uh, significant. You can see how much, you know, two and a half decades of technology improvements can make a difference here. But man, you know, just to, just to put this in perspective, this is a 13-inch um, a uh, 13 screen, right? And uh, that 13 inch screen compared to, um, you know, how much is lost between in that, um, in that framework. But that, that just, that is insane how much thinner that is. And imagine too, is that these two ports pretty much replace the functionality of every single port on this laptop here, on this Toshiba. And then here's side by side with uh, the 2022 MacBook Pro versus a 1997 IBM ThinkPad. Once again, there's no question about the uh, thickness situation there and uh, how much, uh, if you notice uh, how little of a boundary there is or um, a border is on the screen there. You know, hi, how you doing? And uh, you can see how much is uh, being taken up with the LCD on this IBM. But man, just amazing that this was <laughs> what is it? Uh, middle school me, and uh, this is uh, adulty me. I guess you just get more refined, and um, once you figure out what the hell you're doing, <laughs> that's super cool. There's your there's your trackpad right there, and as you can see, no cat tongue, no buttons. Um, the 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 touchpad itself is um, you know touch sensitive, and uh, you have the classic cat tongue there with your left and right click, which could also be interchanged. Um, Windows 98, Mac OS, Sequoia, I believe. Yeah, what a difference. But yeah, time to retire these bad boys to the great uh, e-waste of beyond. Um, you know, it's uh, crazy to think that uh, we've come this far, but you know, I can only imagine how much thinner, lighter, and faster these machines are going to continue to get as the years go by. Um, the nice thing about it though is that we're not in a period of time in which things just go obsolete after six months. You know, the longevity of, of uh, equipment is a lot, more, uh, a lot more real. You know, you're not having to buy something and it's already old once you pull it out of the box. You can have laptops for five years and nobody really cares. And it's uh, it's a lot more uh, it's a lot less disposable in that sense. 